Hi, and welcome to the Sabbath Christian Church's online sermon. We have been building a strong foundation for the Hebrew for Passover, Pesach. And one of the things we have found of great importance is that faith is connected with Passover. God is connected with Passover and so were the people that left according to God's instructions and those that stayed not according to God's instructions. And we could see the inner workings of the people in their body language, in their face and their walking out of uh, doing the blood and uh, uh, everything that they did and walking out of Egypt. The face is important. And what is it that was we've been talking about that makes God's face so impressive and so important and so powerful? What is it within him that shows his face shows our connection with him, our understanding with him, not the actual face, but his person, being. It is because for the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness, and the upright will behold his face, person to person, his presence. That is the power the power at work within and the power of a person's presence. Just as the face shows different emotions and its own kind of language, God, the underlying emotion, not the only, but the underlying emotion is God's righteousness. Now, in the case here, it says that uh, his face, behold his face. And behold is to gaze at mentally, to perceive, contemplate with pleasure, specifically to have a vision and understanding, not of actual sight, God's spirit. And we can't see spirit. Now, let's take a look at what happened with the Passover. Built an ark. And his presence is above the ark. His face is there. Not to be seen physically, but his presence is above the commandments in the ark. His righteousness. And the man turned away from there and went toward Sodom while Abraham was still standing before the Lord. And Abraham said, Will you indeed swap the righteous? And he goes on to try to protect uh, his brother. And the Lord uh, said uh, to Abraham, I will not destroy him on the count of the ten. And as soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham, the Lord departed from his place. And God did protect them. His presence got them to do what not people do not necessarily like to do is get out of town. He says, if you listen to these judgments and keep them, God will keep his covenant and his loving kindness. The whole thing is built around the covenant of the Ten, the Ten Commandments, the basis of righteousness, to build on the righteousness of the Ten. He says, you will be blessed above all people. God's face is righteous. And that righteousness in his presence will bless the people who do that, that God says to do. To be righteous as God is righteous. And Deuteronomy, it says the rock. This is another term used for God because of its solidity and his immovability. Uh, and the perfect rock, not necessarily a physical one, 
His work is perfect, Deuteronomy, and all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness, without injustice, righteousness, and upright is he. So that, again, God's face is righteous. His presence is righteous. All goodness flows from that, and when it's absorbed by our face, great things happen in our lives, and ourselves, and our relationship with God, and everything. He's a shield to all who take refuge in him. His ways are blameless. It says, for who is God besides the Lord? Who is the rock? And he says to Moses, come up to me in the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets that are underneath the ark and below the presence of God. It's as if God rests on these tablets that he gave him. His presence is there above them, connected in a way. He declared to you the covenant which he commanded you to perform, that is the Ten Commandments, and wrote them on two tablets of stone. It could be back then, even now to a certain extent, more solid and more unmovable and more present than anything are these two tablets of stone, showing God's righteousness, his face of righteousness, his presence with the people who are walking in his righteous ways. Therefore, listen to me, men of understanding. And from the Almighty, he says, Surely God will not act wickedly, and the Almighty will not pervert justice. Come on, he says. How would God, how would the Almighty, how would his face, his being, his presence, do anything different from what he gave to people? To declare that the Lord is upright, and there is no righteousness in the psalmist says. And he says, righteousness are, and justice are the foundation of the throne, says the psalmist. The Lord performs righteous deeds, a judgment. <clears throat> and now, he says, Nebuchadnezzar praised, exalted, and honor the King of Heaven, for all his works are true, and his ways are just. He is able to humble those who walk in pride. He is righteous. His word is righteous. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances is everlasting. It's not going to end with anything. His word stays, period. The works of his hands are truth and justice. Precepts are sure. Uh, he ordained his covenant Forever, holy and awesome is his name. So when we walk according to his ways, his righteous presence is with us in all that we do, clearing our path and the way toward final uh, righteousness. Deuteronomy, it says, so he declared to you his covenant which he commanded you to perform, that is the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on the tablets of stone. Again, his face is righteous. His presence is righteous. He can do no wrong. It is not in his character. It is not in his being to do any wrong. And what came out with him from the very beginning was one of the commandments, and the, command, and the commandments found in the creation. But on the, uh, on the uh, seventh day he rested from all the work that he did. There's the commandment, he rested. The righteous God will rest on his holy day. His face is righteousness. And Job says, I will fetch my knowledge from afar, and I will ascribe righteousness to my maker, as do we as we follow his presence and his face of righteousness. Amen, and thank you for watching and listening.